Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James over here with you. I'm trying to get my Bible program out of the way. She's some content information. We've got a phone call on the line, and we're going to try to get to him in just a moment. Uh, I'm going to give you my content information so you can uh, uh, reach us here uh, anytime you want to uh, have a Bible question or have some Bible study, anything like that. 276 340 2653 is how you can reach me, or a word from the Lord at gmail.com. We meet at 250 Boulevard in Eden, and we're glad for you to visit with us anytime you can. So if the caller's still on the line, we'll go ahead and... You're on the word from the Lord. You still there? Hello, caller? Hello? Is this live? Oh, yeah, you're live. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. You're on the word from the Lord. What's your question? I just had a question about, you know those, like, songs that try to mimic what society puts out? You know those songs that, you know, try to mimic what society puts out? What's what's your thoughts on that? Like when they say do a rap song or something like that? Oh, like Christian rock or something like that? Some, yeah, something like that where they make it say. Yeah. It's like what society puts out. What, what do you think about stuff like that? Well, I hear that all the time. I don't really like it. Right. Well, the Bible says in Ephesians 5, 19, speaking to yourself in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody art to the Lord. I, I don't really consider those to be any kind of spiritual songs. They're more worldly. I mean, the fact that they're trying to imitate the world, wouldn't you say? Yeah, exactly. It brings you only closer... Not to mention the fact that most of the time, I would say 99% of the time, they're using instrumental music, which is also condemned in the Bible. So even if it was a, a, uh, a what, the, the words the correct, the words were edifying, the, the singing and making melody would be disregarded in those songs. They wouldn't be singing and making melody in heart to the Lord. They'd be actually using instrumental music, which would be contrary to what the Bible says. Yeah. So, did that, did that help you out? A bit. I've never really liked it. It just didn't seem right at all. Well, you know, some that could, that I, would normally sound so profane and everything just, right. out. Well, a lot of times what, what's happened is people try to become like the world. They want to, they want religion, but they want to be like the world. And, and yeah. the Bible says that friendship with the world is enmity with God, James chapter 4. So, you know, you can't be like the world and be like God. And they're trying to play both ends against the middle, I guess you might say. There isn't. In order to actually follow what it says truthfully, you, you're not supposed to follow both ends. There's only one path. That, that's correct. That's correct. Uh, the, the idea of singing that the Lord wants is teaching and admonishing. It has it has some teaching qualities to it. Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Singing uh, with grace in your heart to the Lord. So again, uh, the world's not really concerned about the teaching and admonishing. That's more about the hype and the feel and uh, you know, the the Holy Ghost, so-called the, the, supposedly the Holy Ghost doesn't come until all the music gets going good. So they're not really interested in the the teaching and edifying that the Bible is talking about in Psalms or in singing. So, yeah, the Bible would condemn that, no doubt about it. Another thing is it's mostly millennials. It's not really the older generation. It's, the way I've seen it, it's always been millennials doing this kind of stuff. Right. And well, obviously I hear that stuff all the time, and I just really... Don't like it, right? Well, to me, it's it's the idea, it's the principle that you find in Judges seventeen six. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. That's that's what we're getting more and more of. Really, that's the reason why you have all the denominations to start with is they're doing what they want to do. But when you open the door to do what you want to do. Instead of doing what God wants, then how can you condemn what someone else does? 
you know, because if you did it, then why can't they do it? If the older generation, they brought in the piano. Well, the younger generation, the millennials, they're bringing in the the smoke machines and the bands and the yeah, you know, right. Christian rock. Well, you can't condemn Christian rock if you won't condemn the piano over here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, um, do we answer your question then? Yep. All right. Let me ask you, where are you calling from? Alaska. Alaska. Okay. All right. Well, glad to hear you. Glad to hear from you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for calling. Okay. All right. You're welcome. All right. Have a good night. Okay. Calling from Alaska. All right. Well, very, very good. Very good. Now, friends, we want to. Uh, that was a good. I guess a good segue into what we're going to be discussing tonight. Tonight, we're actually going to be dealing with uh, the church and uh, is it a denomination? You know, when you talk to the world, they want to be like the, the church in the Bible, but yet they want to bring in the world stuff. They want to be more like the world, like the color we're talking about, the contemporary music, the... the uh, 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 the millennial groups, they want all the praise teams, the, uh, the hip-hop, the rap, and so forth, and they want to call it Christian because they, they know they need to be like God. They know, they know to be something like the Bible. They need some Bible authority, but at the same time, they want to be like the world, and that's what the world does with the church. They want to be, they want the church to be a denomination so it makes them look better. Now, this is a call from a good while back. But he's talking about, he's trying to convince me that the Church of Christ is a denomination like the rest of the denominations, right? uh, like the rest of the denominations he's in. Listen to what he has to say. I know we'll play. Welcome to the show. You're on the word of the Lord. Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon. Good evening. I have one quick question for you. Okay. Uh, I noticed that you guys continually say that you are not a denomination. And my question is, I know denomination is not found in the Bible. So how can you deny the fact that by definition, you are a denomination? Because the church we find in the Bible, sir, is by definition the only kind of church. So if we pattern ourselves after this church that we read about in this Bible, then it won't be a denomination. It will be the only one. And so what we're saying is the denominations have not patterned themselves after the pattern of we're the New Testament about church. The definition. Okay. By definition, if you look it up in the like a theater or whatever, what you are and what you do is considered a denomination. So how can you deny what the nothing to do with denomination? You still are a denomination regardless of what you practice. No. Denomination, denominations being... Denomination, you fall, you fall under the category of my definition. Read it. Uh, if you can look up the psychopedia of denomination, read it, and you fall sir, into the category. But sir, denomination means what? Denomination What's the definition that you're getting? The dictionary is a, a, a religious group, a sect that follows a certain particular... I mean, not, I'm paraphrasing certain particular parameters, and you follow. You are a religious group that follows a certain list of parameters. So that you follow, that means you classify by definition a denomination. Now I can say, you know, you can say, well, I'm a member of the denomination, but in that case, there's only one denomination that's right, and that's the Lord's Church. But I deny the Lord's Church is the denomination because I'm saying this is what we should use as a pattern. We should, we should categorize, we should talk like the Bible says, speak as the Bible speaks. That's true, that's true. I, I'm not denying that. So, so my then... My point is, you're making a... You, you guys make the statements all the time that you're not a denomination, even though by definition that's what but you sir, are. But denomination I mean, is, a, is a part of the whole or a division. And I'm saying we are not a part of the whole. We are the, the church, division, which is what denominationalism is is condemned in the Bible. And that's what I'm telling you is not pleasing to God. 
Now, now the, the caller was insisting that we're a denomination, but here's the thing, friends. He was using a worldly definition of denomination. Well, if you want to take the strictest uh, sense of the word denomination and that it means a group of people that's following something, well, that's, that could be anything. You know, that could be a certain group following a, a set of rules. Well, that could be the Kiwanis Club or the, the Lions Club. But when we're talking in the, in the Bible, the Bible sense, calling Bible things with Bible names, there is no such thing as denomination. There is no such thing as a, as a denomination that is pleasing to God, and therefore we are not a denomination. The Church of Christ is not a denomination. As a matter of fact, uh, when you look at what the Bible is saying, it show, there's clearly a, a line that shows that the Lord's church is the only church in the Bible. Notice you can't find another kind of religious group in this book that is pleasing to God. Not in the New Testament. You can find some other religious groups that are mentioned, the Pharisees, Sadducees, and so forth, but they're not pleasing to God. They're not acceptable to God. As a matter of fact, they had, if you want to say, denominated the Jewish religion. They had actually... Uh, split off and were having their own set of rules and became the uh, religious denominations of their day. But that was, they didn't mean they were accepted by God. The Jewish system, uh, until Christ nailed it to the cross, was, uh, had been uh, uh, broken up and divided up and split up by all the man-made uh, traditions of men, Matthew 5, verse 8 and 9. So denominations, they believe that all the religious groups that profess to be Christians, that they're all part of this one big whole, even though they're all different. Now, here's another, here's another example of that, where the man's going to tell us that you know we're all part of the uh, same, part of the whole. But when you get on TV and you start bringing up what people say, that's their ministry. We're all one. We're all a one. You know, one God. Is that correct? Is it one God? Yes, yeah, but we're not all one. Yes, we are. No, it's not. one God. We are one. One body. The church is one universe. Um, I read the Bible, and I read the Bible. And um, you were talking about earlier about, uh, you know, the different nominations, like Baptists and Presbyterian, right. and all that. Right. I, I, as the way I look at it, you know, when you go to heaven, all the nominations are going to be up there together in heaven. Of God loves everybody. I don't care what church you're in. <laughs> Every church that names the name of Jesus Christ, the Baptist churches, the Methodist churches, the churches of God, the Pentecostal Holiness churches, all the different churches in the area that believe that the Word of God is the infallible Word of God, they have saved people sitting in those churches today. And they are my brothers and our sisters. And I want you to know that we're with them 100%. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm I like what you just said. Family. Yes, a family. Nothing about denomination. No. Family. No. It's, well, the denomination, you, you can't find it in the Word. Right. Uh, uh, there's only one body. Mm -hmm. There's only one Lord. I mean, we all can serve the same true and living God and maybe have just a form of religion. You know, I mean, God's body is consists of many, maybe different parts. Understand what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say? Many members. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. You know. I believe the way I believe because I believe the Bible teaches that. However, these things that I'm talking about, I mean, still with this word, say amen. All these things are not essential for salvation. They have nothing to do with salvation. Amen. It's just methods, mode, difference. Thus, you have different denominations. That's why. A lot of these different denominations were set up because of different methods. Some a little different doctrine on certain things. But you know what? By and large, most of the people that you believe, that you run into, and a lot of these churches I'm talking about around here believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by Jesus. Amen? How many still with me? No. Friends, all that all that talk about all the denominations are going to be in heaven together, and and we're with we're with them one hundred percent. Jackie Poe, Jackie Poe, and Tim Whitehart both are saying that you know what if you just name the name of Jesus, we're with you. No, that's a lie. That's a bald faced lie. They are not with Tim Whitehart would not be with Jackie Poe. 
miracles and all that stuff. He wouldn't be with that. And Jackie Poe would not be with Tim Whitehart. But yet they're saying that they're all together and they're all in one body. And then they'll admit there's no denominations mentioned in the Bible. But yet they are all split up like the definition of a denomination. So why is it that they would condemn denominations and then go ahead and say that they are one? So the problem comes when people don't really understand what the Bible's saying about unity. This idea about uh, being uh, unity and diversity, <clears throat> you know, agree to disagree, or we're going to be, we're all going to be different together, unified with diversity, that, that's not in the Bible. But yet they want to say, well, the Bible teaches we're all together, we're just all different. Well, the Bible talks about some differences of members in the body of Christ, but it doesn't talk about difference of bodies all being together in the body of Christ. Now, look at these verses. Here's, these are two examples of what are used to talk about the, uh, the diversity and yet the unity that you find in the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all members of that one body being many are, are one body, so also is Christ. Now, friends, here's what they're missing. I'm going to get a little ahead of myself here, but I'm going to say this. The problem with this verse is denominations are not part of the same body. A body is made up of members. See, the Baptist body is made up of Baptist people, and the Presbyterian body is made up of Presbyterian people, and the Methodist body is made up of Methodist people, and the Pentecostal holders body is made up of Pentecostal holders, and so forth. And so those are all different bodies in and of themselves. You don't say many bodies. Many bodies is one body. That says many members are one body. And so what we're talking about, what Paul is saying is, the members of the one body are all the same kind. They all belong to the same kind in order to be part of that body. See, I've got different members of my body, but you know what? They're all part of me. They all have my DNA. They all come from me. And so we're, they're all the same kind. You can cut this arm off and throw it across the room. And someone comes along and says, we're going to find out whose arm this is. And you know what? They do DNA tests and they say, hey, this is James's arm. It belongs to James's body. See, because it is the same kind as my body. But Baptists, Methodists, Lutheran, Pentecostals, Presbyterians, and so forth, they're not the same kind of body. So to say that they are all many members is to is to uh, uh, misuse or abuse this scripture. That's not what, that, what this verse is saying. Another verse is this. In 1 John, or excuse me, John, chapter 15, John 15, beginning in verse 1. Jesus says, I'm the vine, the true vine, and, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that, hear, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, uh, he purged it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear of it, fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth fr uh, fruit, bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man Abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So, this verse is not saying that denominations are all unified and connected to the same vine. They're just all different branches on the same vine. Friends, if they were all connected to the same vine, they'd all be producing the same kind of fruit. And they're not. The Pentecostals over here, they have the fruit of of, of so-called mirac miraculous gifts. They want to say, yeah, we've got miraculous gifts. We've got the gifts of healing and speaking in tongues and handle snakes and so forth. Well, why isn't that fruit on every part of the branch then? Why isn't, why isn't every branch producing that? Why are some branches producing something different? Why do the, uh, why do the so-called Trinitarians, why do the people that believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, why are they producing that kind of fruit, that kind of doctrine? And then there's another group over here, the oneness, like uh, Marty Roberts uh, over in uh, uh, Maddan. Why is, why is he saying, no, there's only one in the Godhead? Now, what kind of tree is that? What kind of vine produces that? And so you can't say the denominations 
are all the same. All, uh, all part of the same body or all part of the same vine. It just doesn't work that way. Now, what we want to what we want to consider then is this. What is it that makes them think they're all together? See? In John 10, verses 14 and 16, do these verses really teach that there are many denominations that belong to the church you read about in the Bible, the church of Christ? In John 10, verse 14, John 10 and verse 14. Can you hear in a minute? Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I, uh, even so know I the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other, sh <clears throat> other sheep have I have which are not of this fold. Them also must, uh, uh, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Now, why is it that people think that this is saying that all denominations belong into the fold of God? Why is it they think they're all the sheep that belong to one shepherd? We'll, get, we'll come back to this verse. See, the problem is they don't really understand what the Bible is saying. They're using the world's definition of a denomination, thinking that they all belong in the fold. Here's the, here's the world's definition of a denomination. A large group of religious congregations united under a common faith and name and organized under a single administrative and legal hierarchy. Well, friends, really, if you want to look at this definition of a denomination then that is not talking about all the religious groups coming under the, the organized name of the Church of Christ. They all have different names and different hierarchies. Now, the first man that called in says, well, James, that's what I'm talking about. You are a denomination. No, let's read on. Notice this. A denomination is one of a series of kinds, values, or sizes, as in a system of currency or weights. Cash register, for example, uh, cash registers have compartments of bills of different denominations. The stamps come in 25 cents and 45 cent denominations. Or it can be a name or designation, especially for a class or group. A religious denomination uh, is a subgroup within a religion that operates under a common name, tradition, and identity. The term is frequently used to describe various Christian denominations, for example, Eastern Orthodoxy, Catholicism, and the many varieties of Protestantism or Restorationism. It is also used to describe the four branches of Judaism, Orthodox, Conservative, Reform, and Reconstructionist. And less often, although it would be, uh, not be inappropriate, to describe the two main branches of Islam, Sunni and Shia. So they're saying this is the way, this is the, what a denomination is. It is a big umbrella that has some divisions under it, and, and that, that makes them all denominations. And therefore, people think, well, the church of Christ is in the Bible, but we all believe in Christ, therefore we're just all part of the same group. We're just all part of the little branches that are splintering off over here. Friends, that is not what the Bible talks about when it talks about the church of Christ. See, when we're talking about the church of Christ and the parts of the body, we're saying that they all look like the whole. See, if you have something that is divided up into parts, it's going to look like the whole. It's going to look like the whole. It's going to look like, and when you, when you take all the parts away, you say, well, you know what? That's going to look like, like the whole. If you have a part to a, a Mustang... You know what? That's going to belong on a Mustang. It's not going to belong on a GTO. If that is a Mustang part, it only goes to a Mustang. If that is a Ford pickup part, it only goes to a Ford pickup. If that's a Mopar part, it only goes on a Mopar. See what we're talking about? It, it has a, a certain characteristic of that to which it belongs. And when you put it together, then it becomes part of the whole. But denominations don't look that way. When you start looking at a denomination... They don't look anything like the whole 
that you read about in the Bible. The parts all have to match the whole. Let me give you an example. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, now I really don't want to get off uh, on this uh, tangent too much, but verse 8, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall be taken away, or it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Now, a lot of people don't, uh, they get all confused about what the part and what the whole is and so forth, the perfect, the parts of the perfect. Uh, some people say, well, the perfect is Jesus. When Jesus comes, then all the parts will be done away. No, friends. The parts all look like the perfect. The perfect is the complete. So all the parts that are used, the prophecy in part or the knowledge in part, the miraculous gifts that brought about the partial knowledge, when the perfect was come, then those parts will be done away. So the parts all look like the perfect. Now, what was in part? Prophecy, knowledge, Right, the things that were used to confirm the word. If you look in, if you go back and you look in First Corinthians chapter twelve, you're going to find that Paul said, "Here's the the manifestation of the Spirit. It was given the the word of wisdom to another, the word of knowledge to another, faith uh, to another, the gifts of healing of the same Spirit to another, working of miracles to another." Uh, a prophecy to another uh, discerning of spirits to another diverse kind of tongues interpretation of tongues so forth so all of these things were used to bring about or to uh, bring to pass the perfect which was the inspired word of God so all of the parts look like the perfect if if you if in the first century you went to a you went to a, a church you went to the church You'd go to the Church of Christ, number one. You'd go to the Lord's Church. There was only one in existence. And so you'd go to the Lord's Church, and you know what you would find? You'd find someone might have a letter that was written from Paul. But another church may not have that letter. It may not be written down or copied for them yet. So they just may have someone who was had a miraculous gift that was speaking to them with a word of knowledge or who was giving them a word of prophecy. And so in that case, that would be in part. But when all these parts, as they were being written down and compiled together, when they came to pass, they made this completed, confirmed word of God. So all the revelation that was given by, uh, that was given orally, as, as a, an apostle came and taught or, or so forth, but as it was given orally, that was in part. But when it was all written down, the parts vanish away. That's what I'm saying. The parts look like the perfect. The parts look like the completed uh, product. And so all the revelation that was given, that was being spoken during the first century before the Bible was written, looks exactly like what the Bible we have today is. Only the, di the only difference is today we have it written down, and back then they didn't have it written down. So the parts all look like the perfect. Now, friends, if that is, if that is the way the church looks, the church and the Bible looks, then all of the parts would look like the same. If all the churches came together in one place, they would all speak the same thing, they would all mind the same thing, they'd all be in the same judgment. Now, how do I know if a church is part of the body? If a group of Christians, a group of people that call themselves Christians, they come together and they meet with another group of Christians. If they're all teaching the same thing and minding the same thing, believing the same things, abiding on the same doctrine, guess what? They're going to be the same. But if you have a group of people that come together and they believe different things like these so-called unity movements, these so-called unity meetings where you've got the, the Baptist and the Methodist Lutheran, those, they aren't the same. Oh, they may have some things the same, but they're not the same. There was a vacation Bible school up here in Eden. It was four churches. It was, I believe it was the, it was the Disciples of Christ, the, the, the uh, North Sprague Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. It was two Methodists and Episcopal Church. 
the Rock Church, and they all came together for a vacation Bible school. You know what? They could come together, but they're not the same. Now, they believe a lot of things that are the same, but they're, they're four different groups. You mean tell me they're part of the same body? They don't look anything alike. They don't have the same DNA. But if you've got individuals that are following the Bible, and they're saying, well, we're part of the body over here, and there's part of the body over here. If they all came together, they'd speak the same thing, and they'd mind the same thing. That's why you could say, well, the, the, the church in Eden, the church in, in Danville, 120 American Legion, the church at, in Martinsville, 823 Starting Avenue, if they come together, they're going to speak the same things and mind the same things. You know why? We're part of the same body. We're part of the body of Christ. Because we're speaking just like, just like the Bible speaks. And so the parts always will look like the whole. If they belong to the whole, they, they, they will look like the whole. But in the denominational world, they see the church of Christ as being just a big umbrella that, may, that will cover all the different groups. As long as you believe in Christ, oh, you're good to go. No, friends. That's not what the church looks like. I mean, here's an example of what we're talking about. Here's Billy Graham. Here's Billy Graham talking about the, uh, the big umbrella. I don't think he says the word umbrella. But he talks about the, the wideness of God's grace and how it's going to reach all these different people and different walks of life, even those who haven't uh, ever heard of Christ. Get over to it. Loves Christ. Tell me, what do you think is the future of Christianity? I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. And that's what God is doing today. He's calling people for, out of the, the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world. Uh, they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus, but uh, they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have and they turn to the only light that they have and I think that they are saved and they're going to be with us in heaven. This is fantastic. I'm so thrilled to hear you say that. There is a wideness in God's mercy. There is. There definitely is. All right, there's a wideness in God's mercy. Here you have Robert Schuler and Billy Graham. Talking about how, yeah, you, just, you know, you don't even have to know the name of Christ and you're going to get to heaven. Oh, God just loves everybody. Let's put them all under the umbrella. If you believe in Jesus, or even if you don't believe in Jesus, even if you don't even know the name of Jesus. Well, that's a big umbrella, folks. That's not an umbrella, that's a tent. That's huge. Is that really what the Bible says? The Bible says that broad is the way that leads to destruction and many there be which go in there at. Don't tell me that God is putting everybody in this big umbrella who professes to know Jesus or claims to know Jesus or says the word Jesus or that they believe in Jesus and even those who don't even know the name of Jesus that they're going to be on the narrow road to salvation. Not happening, folks. It's not happening. Because they don't understand what the church looks like. They want the church of Christ, the, the, the church that Christ bought with his blood, Acts 20 verse 28. They want that church to look like a great big tent where everybody's welcome and we can be different and we'll just say we're part of the, the body of Christ. No, no sir, no ma'am. Doesn't happen that way. And here's why. The problem is that they don't listen to what the Bible is saying. Let's go back to John 15. In John 15, when Jesus talks about the vine and the branches, he doesn't say the denominations are the branches. Look what he says. He says, I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Men are attached to the vine. 
not whole bodies of religious groups that believe something different, that teach something different, that are contrary to the Bible. That's not what we're talking about. Individuals who have obeyed the gospel, that have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine that will deliver them, they are the individuals that then can say they are part of the body of Christ. Romans 6 and verse 17, Paul says, But God be thanked that you were servants, that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which delivered you. Friends, the form of doctrine that was delivered in a Baptist church, in a Wesleyan church, in a Mormon church, is not the same as the form of doctrine that's delivered in the Bible. And I know that because you have to have something more than the Bible to get those churches. So you can't say, well, I'm part of the Church of Christ, even though, even though I don't realize what the Church of Christ really is. You can't say, I'm a member of the Church of Christ, even though I'm over here in some man-made group. No, the Church of Christ is not this big umbrella, and you say, well, I'm, I'm just kind of roaming around under the big tent. No, that's not what the Church looks like. The church is made up of individuals who have obeyed a specific form of doctrine. And thus they have become members of the body of Christ. You can't say, I obeyed a form of doctrine that got me into the Lutheran church or the Wesleyan church, and yet I'm part of the church of Christ. No. Because that form of doctrine that you obeyed got you into a man-made church. It didn't get you into the church you read about in the book. And if you think the church of Christ... It's just this big umbrella, a big tent that houses or covers uh, all these denominations. You, you don't know what the Bible's saying. You don't understand how the Bible describes the Lord's church. Let's look again. Let's look again at, at another uh, uh, verse. Let's go back to John uh, chapter 10. Here's the problem that they're having with this. Uh, all these sheep in a different fold. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am, no, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Now, think about this, friends. If you know Christ, then that means Christ knows you. If you say that you know Christ, then you're saying that Christ knows you. But if you're over here in a man-made church, how can Christ know you? How can you say you're in the, the fold, that you're part of these sheep, that Christ is shepherding? Someone says, well, see, all the denominations, they're different sheep. So you got different sheep. You look out in the field and you've got different sheep. Uh, when I was... When I was in college, we uh, had, a lot of, had a lot to do with livestock, and we would had different kinds of sheep. We were livestock judging. We might have some, uh, uh, you might have some Rambouillet sheep. They were good for wool production. And you might have some Suffolk sheep that are good for meat production, and they look totally different. Uh, a Suffolk lamb is got a black face and black legs, and and real, you know, uh, it's not got a whole lot of long wool. I mean, it will get long if you let it grow, I guess. But it's a meat lamb. But those Rambouillets or, or uh, Merinos, whatever, man, they got wool all over the place coming up their eyes and look like a big old, you know, woolly tumbleweed or something. Now, they look different. Some of them, some of them have uh, uh, dark wool. Some of them have white wool. Some of them have white face. Some of them have black face. They look different. And so I said, well, see, that's the way it is the denomination. There are all just different kinds of sheep, but they all belong to the same folk. No. Denominations aren't different kinds of sheep. Here's how I know this. Look at this. Look at the next verse. Jesus said, Other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Now, friends, if denominations are part of the one fold, why is it that they've got all different kinds of doctrines that separate them? They're not part of the one fold. You don't get to bring all the different kinds of sheep and say, well, they're all the same kind. No, they're not the same kind. 
You know, you can put all these different animals together and say, all, all the same kind. No, they're not the same kind. Yeah, they're not the same kind. You can put sheep and goats in the same pen. They don't mean they're the same kind. Jesus said there's one fold. But yet, if you look at the denominational world, there's a whole bunch of different folds out there. You've got the Baptist fold, the Methodist fold, the Lutheran fold, the Presbyterian fold, the Western fold, the Catholic fold, the Mormon fold. And we're supposed to believe that they're all the same? No. No, they're not all the same. They're all divided. When Jesus says there are other sheep that he's going to bring into one fold, he's talking about the Jews and the Gentiles are going to come together. Remember when he's talking, when he says this. He's talking to Jews. He's talking to Israel. But he's preparing, he's laying the groundwork for the fact that one day the Gentiles are going to come in. And they're going to be one fold, in one fold with the Jews. Because they're all going to be Christians. There's going to be neither bond nor free, neither male nor female, neither Jew nor Greek. They're all going to be one in Christ. And that's what he says in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. In verse 16, look what he says. He says that he might reconcile both, both who? Both Jew and Gentile. Both Jew and Gentile unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Jew and Gentile are going to come together in one fold. Not all different denominations coming together in one fold. See, you have to twist the scriptures to get to mean that. And so when people say, well, we're all different, you know, we're just different denominations under the same big umbrella, you don't understand what the Bible says. Now, we get back to denominate. To denominate means to give a name or, or to uh, designate. Therefore, they, they, they designate or denominate themselves to distinguish from each other. Now, if we're all in one fold, why would we distinguish between one another? Why wouldn't we all be the same? Why wouldn't we all be the same kind? But you've got the Baptists over here. We're going to denominate and call ourselves Baptists. And you got, then you have the Methodists over here. They're going to say, well, we're going to denominate and call ourselves Methodists. We want to be divided from them. You want to be in the one fold, but you want to be divided? Jesus says, I'm going to reconcile both unto God. And man comes along and says, we're going to denominate and try to be reconciled to God. No. No, ma'am. No, sir. Won't happen. Let's look again at the definition of denominate. Denomination. In, in 1398, it would simply mean a naming. From the word denom uh, denomination, whatever. A calling by anything other than the proper name, metonymy. From the uh, word that means to, to name, the mon in the monetary sense, in 1660, the meaning of religious sect came about in 1716. See, friends, this is what I'm saying. The word denomination, when you start applying it to the Bible, you, you're applying a definition that didn't come along until 15, 16, 1700 years, let's say at the best, 13, 1400 years later than when the Bible was written. So you can't use a man-made term then to describe uh, uh, Christ church alright but there is an idea about denomination that is in the Bible and that is to be divided see if Christianity if Christianity is denominated it's because men have divided it but Christianity is not the denomination Christianity is the pure religion the church of Christ and following Christ thus being Christians that's what's pure. It's when men come along and denominate it. That's where the problem comes around. Now, here, by definition, when you denominate, you must have division. And that is what's condemned in the Bible. Now, if the Lord's church has been denominated, then that means it has been divided. And by definition, that's a sin. That's the very thing the Bible says, don't do. In 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10, 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10, Paul says, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but ye all be perfectly uh, joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. 
No divisions. But then the denomination world, the divided world, the world that has divided themselves by names and creeds, comes along and says, oh, but we're all one. No, by definition, you're divided. You're divided with your names. You're divided with your doctrines. You're divided with your creeds. You're divided with your catechisms. You're divided with your practices, your methods, and yet you want to say, well, we're all together. No, you're not. Your denominations, your denominations, your divisions. And so, if you want to say, well, you're just part, of, you're just part of the division, James. No, I'm not part of the division. The church I'm a member of is the church that you read about in the Bible. Men come along and add their creeds and their catechisms, and they divide the church up and and divide it into different sections, sects, if you will. They divide it up into different different uh, different bodies and change the very thing that we're saying, hey, the Bible says we ought to be speaking the same thing. No, we're going to divide up and speak different things and then call ourselves unified. Brother, that, just, that doesn't make any kind of sense. We're going to have unity by being divided. We're going to have unity by saying something different or speaking something different. No. That's not... That's not what the Bible says. So the Lord's church is not a denomination. It is what has been denominated. And the very fact that people are saying, well, we're part of the body. No, what you've done is you've split off from the body. You've divided off from the body, bringing in a different doctrine, a different creed to, to uh, uh, bring about your very existence. You don't, you don't call the U.S. Mon, mon, monetary system a denomination. The U.S. dollar. We're not talking about the bill. The U.S. dollar. That's the monetary system. You don't say, well, it's a denomination. No, it's not a denomination. It's the U.S. dollar. The U.S. monetary system. Now, what has happened is, when you divide the U.S. monetary system into different bills, now you've denominated it. The U.S. dollar has been denominated into one dollars and two and two dollars and five dollars and ten dollars and twenty dollars and fifty dollars, hundred dollars. It's been denominated. But the U.S. dollar is the monetary system. It is not a denomination. But it's been divided up. Now, if you're saying that we're all part of the same, we're not. So, well, James, all those dollars, they, they're, the same, they're the same U.S. dollar. Well, you can denominate the U.S. dollar and that'd be fine. But the U.S. dollar is still unified on what it stands for. Right? The U.S. dollar, the $1 and the $5 and $10, they're, they're still pure parts of the whole monetary system. But men have denominations that don't look anything alike. They don't have the same value. They don't have the same doctrines. They don't bring about the same thing. See? What you're doing, you're saying, well, uh, the Baptist, Method, Lutheran, Presbyterians, we're all like ones and fives and tens and twenty. No. No. What you're like is you're like saying, well, here's the U.S. dollar. Let, let's pay for something. Well, we're gonna. How are we gonna pay for it? Well, we're gonna use a, uh, we're gonna use a yen, and we're gonna use a ruble, and we're gonna use a euro, and we're gonna use what all kinds of currencies? They're all different kinds of currencies. And you said, oh, well, we all part of the U.S. dollar? No, you're not. You're all different. The Lord's Church is not one of many. The Church of Christ is not one of many denominations. It's not denominated into different kinds. It is the kind. It is the only kind. But men come along and make different doctrines and they produce denominations and they produce all the different religious groups that the Bible condemns because it divides people, tears people apart where they're not speaking the same things or minding the same things. And friends, this is why the division that comes from these doctrines is so 
so dangerous. It produces denomination. When someone comes along and says, well, I, I believe this is what it teaches, and I believe that's what it teaches, and I'm going to have a creed book that's going to teach born in sin. I'm going to have a creed book that teaches one in the God, and I'm going to have a creed book that teaches women can preach, and I'm going to have a creed book that says, see what they're doing? They're dividing. And by definition, they have divided away from the Bible. They don't follow the Bible. Listen, the Bible says, teach no other doctrine. But men come along and bring in different doctrines, and thus they corrupt the truth. And they become something different than what the Bible says. Look at this, 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy, excuse me, 2 Peter 2 and verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken. And through covetous shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Now, friends, did you catch this? Peter said, they, their pernicious ways, uh, excuse me, verse 1, false teachers among you who shall bring in downable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. These are people from the Lord's church. People who know the truth and go off. Those are being condemned. Now, friends, let me tell you. If the Bible condemns individuals who are part of the body of Christ, who come in and teach different things, like this in Acts 20 and verse 30, Also of your own self shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. If the Bible condemns people who are part of the church of Christ who come in and teach something different, who, who uh, start teaching perverse things, if the Bible condemns that, what makes you think that a religious group that starts purely off of man's teaching, that's founded on a man's teaching, that starts as a result of a man starting a church or a woman starting a church, L and G Y. Joseph Smith, John Smythe, the Baptist Church, John Wesley. What makes you think that God is going to accept them? God won't even accept people who drift away, who knew the truth, who started with the truth. He won't accept them. And you think God's going to accept you in a church that didn't even start with this book? Wasn't even recognized in that book? See what we're talking about? This is the danger of denominations. The danger of, of man-made doctrines produces the division that split us up and divide us. Listen, the Bible says, teach no other doctrine. 1 Timothy 1 and verse 3. 1 Timothy 1 and verse 3. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went to Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Now friends, what has brought about what's produced all these different man-made churches. It's different doctrines. It's different doctrines. Now, if Paul says, teach no other doctrine than what's in this book, what are we supposed to say about individuals who teach a different doctrine? Oh, yeah, we're just part of the big umbrella? No! And that's why, that's why members of the Lord's church who are teaching perverse things or bringing perverse things in, either need are to be rebuked and then withdrawn from until they repent. That's why we say, look, you're bringing in false doctrine, you're bringing these mechanical instruments music or these uh, singing groups like acapella. No, that's perverse. You're changing the Lord's church. You're bringing different doctrines. No. Speak the same thing, same doctrine. Friends, the church of Christ is what you read about in this book. It comes about when a person obeys the gospel, they become a member of the Lord's church, not a man-made church. 
He said, well, James, I, I, I did some things that look, that look like what the Bible teaches. Friends, it didn't put you in the Lord's church. If it didn't put you in the Lord's church, what makes you think that you're in the Lord's church? If you wound up in a man-made church, what makes you think you drifted off by a happenstance into the Lord's church? Isaiah 35 8 says that the, the wayfaring man, though fools, will not err therein. You don't just stumble into the Lord's church. You find it by rendering obedience to the gospel, abiding in the doctrine of Christ. That is the, the doctrine that Christ taught. The doctrine that Christ taught is what we use to be the church of Christ. Friends, I am out of time. I didn't realize what the, what, how the clock was looking. I'm out of time. Friends, if I can assist you, appreciate your attention tonight. If I can assist you in any way, 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me. Until next time, friends, thanks for watching. Always make sure you're getting a word from the Lord. Have a good night.